Hey, welcome back to Philomena Jack Studio. Uh, I've taken a short trip to New York City and I brought my paintings with me and I brought the dog and I've got my art supplies, which is what we're going to talk about today, like what's in my travel kit. Uh, I brought my ukulele. I brought my new glasses. Do you like them? They're Kate Spade. I love you, Kate Spade. Um, but guess what I didn't bring? My luggage. <laughs> so, you know, my clothes, my deodorant, my facial moisturizers. Why am I talking like I'm from the South? Um, so I'm wearing my husband's t-shirt and we went and bought me some stretch pants so I could go work out at the gym here. Um, but, you know, I'm making do. No big whoops, right? Uh, I do look forward to getting home and getting my moisturizer though. So what I thought I'd talk to you about today, especially since um, I have so so fewer so many fewer things that I normally have with me. I talked to you about what's in my travel kit as an artist. So I've got things I'm working on, and because I'm sitting in a room that is not my own, I've be brought plastic. Um, these are tablecloths from the dollar store. I always get the same one so that. When I'm doing a big class, they all look the same. You know, they all have paint marks eventually on them, but so some paper, um, some plastic tablecloth material, and it's easy to cut. So when you first take it out of the bag, if you cut it, you can make it into smaller pieces. In my studio, I use four millimeter plastic that I use as my palette so that I can peel up the skins uh, of the paint after they dry, <clears throat> but traveling, just these plastic things. So this I generally always have with me. This is such a great gift for my bestie. Um, and in here I've got, gotta have Sharpies. My friend uh, Bela sent me a bunch of Sharpies a while ago and I'm still working my way through them. I have these from Arteza, um, these water brushes. I've had a lot of different brands of water brushes and I like these a lot. So you put water in the barrel here and they have a little button that says push. You press on there and the water, can you see that, comes out. And so I paint a lot with inks. They look like they're watercolors, but they're actually ink and these are great. These are great for when you're in the airport. So don't fill them with water. Go through customs wherever you're going. Then when you're waiting for your plane, go to the bathroom, fill them with water, and then you can be painting the whole time. Um, so I've got that, got, uh, red um, Prismacolor erasable um, pencil, a really gnarly kneaded eraser, I'm embarrassed to show you. Um, more, let's see, oh, this is great. Um, charcoal white, I love this for um, pencil drawings, things like that. Uh, oh, get yourself a good sharpener. This thing is pretty heavy, like it's a weapon. Get yourself a good sharpener. Um, it's worth the extra couple bucks versus those plastic ones. Um, I've got a rubber um, non-needable eraser uh, and all kinds of pencils and things falling all over the place. Just random stuff. But this is my favorite marking tool for my sketchbook are these small sharpies really fine nib those are my favorite and if they start to dry out like sometimes i'll do something stupid like i'll go over wet paint and they don't like that um understandably so if you can flick off that wet paint or uh, put the tip in a little bit of wa warm water um sometimes you can get them to come back to life so all of that fits into my little kit there and then, er, um, more brushes, which I'm really, really hard on my brushes. Maybe you don't want to follow my, my advice on any of this stuff. So I've got two more of these Arteza. They come in different shapes and sizes, but I've got, so brands I'm liking a lot is this, um, Umbria. And I use all synthetic brushes. If you've been following me for a while, you know I do my best to not use anything that contains animal products. Um, that's really important to me. Sometimes people gift me things 
that they're not using. So I do have animal hair brushes that are being recycled. Um, so this brush, ah, I have two of these. I got these in a class I took in Italy uh, in October. And uh, they probably come from a hardware store. They come from this brand called Dexter. I love the shape of them and you just feel, I feel so painterly when I'm using them. These, you know, this is a one and a half incher. Uh, I think it was a dollar, dollar, dollar and a half. Um, love these. And I thought I had brought some Trikel. I have two Trikel brushes, which I like very much. I'll put a link to Trikel's website. Um, and just random brushes. I teach a lot of classes, so I buy like packs of classes specifically made for teachers. So some of these, they aren't great, but they make marks and they I get beautiful results. And then always at least one um, sort of scraping spatula tool. So those are the brushes I brought with me. Um, so, Back to markers, so I use these Liquitex markers, you know, you shake them and press them down. They're okay. So there's no odor, fantastic. Um, they act and dry just like the other acrylics that I'm using, but they don't, I don't know the long, how their longevity isn't always great. Again, if you dip this in hot, hot or warm water, um, you can kind of get some life back to it. Um, so can, another, container for water because I'm traveling. I don't want to assume that I'm going to have uh, some sort of container that's going to work. Um, and it's lightweight, so traveling. So little baby spray bottle. And this one's great because it has this little locking mechanism on it. So I can spray, 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 and then throw it in my purse. Yay. Um, okay. Another Liquitex marker. Um, this one's a big fatty. You can get these at Michael's and wait for the coupon. And oftentimes they're locked up behind uh, a gate, which makes them all the more interesting and fascinating to me. Okay, so I have two bottles of medium, medii, mediums. Are they a large at that point? <laughs> um, I've got Liquitex glazing medium. This one is, uh, they're calling it glazing medium fluid medium. So they say you can't gl do glazing the same way you can uh, with oils. I use acrylics. They say you can't do that, but you can. You get yourself some glazing medium. Um, and then airbrush medium. So um, this is kind of like a, uh, a long lost secret that I learned from another artist Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm forgetting her name. She has a great YouTube channel. If you if you Google um, like worst mistakes acrylic artists make, um, she has some cool videos. I'm sorry, I'm forgetting her. Um, so airbrush medium, it just thins everything out. It's not really like glazing in that it creates no extra body at all. It doesn't change if you're gloss, it's gonna be gloss. If it's matte, it's gonna be matte. It doesn't change that at all. Has, I don't use airbrushing at all yet. Um, so it's not, I just put it on my palette and dip, dip into it. And it just thins out the, the paint somewhat. Uh, sometimes these heavy body, heavy body acrylics get really heavy and you don't always want that. So then, oh, another marker, silver. If you're gonna start off with these, get definitely get black in all the sizes you can get the gold and get the white um and then <laughs> the neons i love the neons okay so speaking of neons holbein is my favorite brand of acrylic paint um except for titanium white titanium white i really like liquitex um so i've got some holbeins in here so you'll see i kind of use whatever i've got around so holbein holbein Holbein, love them. I, like, the, if I was gonna eat any of the paints, it would be these neons from Holbein. Um, another marker, this one's gray. Can you believe it? Gray, but there's this little bit of gray that hap 
happens just underneath the, the eyelids. So great. Um, so these basics, this is the cheapo brand, um, Liquitex Basics. Um, some of them are great. So if they're great, use them. I, oh, a little tip. I put these blue and tealy blue stickers on my things so that one, because again, I teach a bunch of classes and when I take classes, I like to know I'm not grabbing somebody else's thing. Um, so get yourself from the dollar store, like a thousand smiley stickers and put it on your stuff. Uh, so this next brand is Galleria. Win oh, Winston and Newton Galleria acrylic. So these are so buttery and lovely. And this green, I can't live without this phthalo green that they have. It's got a little bit of blue in it. Oh, I love it. So uh, this golden, this is another one of my favorite, favorite colors, Payne's Gray. So it's, it's bluey purple. Can you see it? They call it gray. You can see how opaque it is. See that mark up there? That mark, Golden does this cool thing where it tells you um, how opaque any of their paints are. Um, so you see this yellow here? You see how you can see these little bit of stripes? That means it's a little more transparent than how dark that is. Oh, and it turns out, so uh, Holbein does it too. Can you see it? I'm, I've squished it too much. Can you see that right there? It's telling you how opaque your paint is. Um, titanium white will not only lighten any of your colors, but it'll also change the opacity. So <clears throat> if you had sort of a transparent red and you added titanium white, so not only would you be making it more pink or you would be making it pink, but you'd also be making it opaque. Good to know. Um, I got this weird brand up in Rochester. There's a great art store in Rochester. It's like a proper art store. Um, Brilliant Blue by Aqua Acrylic. I guess that's the brand name. Um, so I only have one of these, but I couldn't not get that color. Yes, I can make that color, but I bought the color. Um, more of those Lake Latex paints. We're at 12 minutes, holy moly. Um, cadmium red. So it looks like I brought a lot of colors. <laughs> I guess I was planning on staying longer than I thought because I want to finish up these two paintings. Um, I've got a show coming up. The title is We Are Called and it's an investigation of how we become our best selves and sometimes how it doesn't feel like we are best, our best selves and these portraits uh, kind of fit into it. I also have uh, a sketch pad with me of other paintings that not necessarily for the show, but just um, I like to wipe my brushes off on other things so that the paint doesn't go down the drain. Um, and so you can see these backgrounds. I was at one point wiping off some purple and wiping off some yellow and wiping off this Payne's Gray. That's at Payne's Gray. It's so beautiful. I love it. Okay, so if you'd like to come to the show, you're in the Corning, New York area. It the, it opens April 16th, 2018, but the fun party is April 20th is the public artist reception. Super excited. It's going to be a fun time. These pins will be there for free. You can come and uh, show off some bling. 79 West Market Street in Corning, New York, uh, five to eight. And if you need more info, <clears throat> you can check out my website, philomenajackstudio.com. Thank you so much for hanging out. I hope you're able to make some beautiful art today. It is quite overcast here in Manhattan, but it's great uh, lighting in here for getting some painting done. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, cheers. <laughs>